Hey guys, in this lesson today, we're going to take a look at the care plan for increased intracranial pressure, also known as ICP. So in this lesson, we will briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of increased ICP. We're also going to take a look at additional things that would be included in an ICP care plan, like subjective and objective data that your patient may present with, as well as the necessary nursing interventions and rationales. So increased ICP is defined by an increase in pressure in the skull caused by an increase in the volume of brain tissue, blood, cerebrospinal fluid, or by the presence of a space-occupying lesion. The increased pressure compresses brain tissue, which causes damage to the neurons, leading to neuron changes, eventual herniation, and brain death. Causes include cerebral edema, hemorrhage, hydrocephalus, hypertension, cerebral vasodilation, a tumor, or a mass. So the desired outcome is to minimize ICP to prevent any damage to nerve tissue and prevent long-term neurological deficits. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with increased ICP may present with. Now, remember, subjective data these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. Uh, these things might include confusion or memory loss. Objective data includes altered level of consciousness, pupil changes, Babinski reflex, posturing, seizures, Cushing's triad, which indicates impending herniation and includes abnormal respirations, a wide pulse pressure, and bradycardia. We will also see an elevated temperature in these patients. Okay, so let's jump into some of the nursing interventions for increased ICP. Complete neuro checks every hour as neurological changes related to increased ICP may be subtle or may be rapid. So frequent detailed neurochecks allows changes to be recognized quickly so interventions can be initiated. An elevated temperature, sometimes as high as 104, is common with increased ICP because of the loss of autonomic regulation. So be sure to monitor your patient's temperature. Also, monitoring hemodynamics to assess for Cushing's triad and to evaluate cerebral perfusion pressure, which is the difference between mean arterial pressure and intracranial pressure. Okay, so for patients with increased ICP, sedatives and CNS depressants need to be avoided because they can alter neurochecks. Common order medications include osmotic diuretics like mannitol and hypertonic saline to decrease edema and corticosteroids to decrease inflammation. Some cases it might be necessary to prepare the patient for a surgical intervention like a craniectomy. This will remove a portion of the skull to allow space for swelling or placement of an external ventricular drain in the event of an elevated ICP. Okay, so the EVD or external ventricular drain should be leveled to the tragus to be approximately in line with the fourth ventricle of the brain. Any increase in ICP above seven to eight would cause cerebral spinal fluid to drain because 10 centimeters of water correlates to approximately seven to eight millimeters of mercury ICP. So if the EVD is not leveled properly too much or too little, cerebral spinal fluid could drain and too little drainage could cause increased ICP and possible brain herniation. 
Because of medications given to manage increased ICP, like mannitol, it is important to monitor electrolytes and urine output. Mannitol and hypertonic saline can increase sodium levels, which could cause fluctuation in sodium levels, which could lead to seizures. Urine output should be monitored to verify diuresis. There are certain interventions that are utilized to minimize ICP, like maintaining the head of bed between 30 and 45 degrees. Below 30 and above 45 can both increase ICP. You also want to decrease stimuli as agitation and stress can increase ICP in your patient and then avoid valsalva maneuvers because coughing and bearing down can increase ICP also. All right, guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for increased ICP. Let's do a quick review. Increased ICP occurs when there is an increase in pressure in the brain cavity or skull, which compresses the brain tissue and leads to neuron changes and damage. Subjective data includes confusion and memory loss. Objective data includes altered LOC, pupil changes, Babinski reflect, reflex, seizures, Cushing's triad, posturing, and elevated temperature. Provide frequent neuro checks every hour to decrease complications. Monitor your patient's temperature, their hemodynamics, electrolytes, and their urine output. Avoid sedatives and CNS depressants to prevent alterations in your neuro checks. Administer osmotic diuretics and corticosteroids. Level and zero your EVD. Perform interventions like keeping the head of the bed at between 30 and 45 degrees and decrease stimuli to prevent increases in ICP. And finally, prepare the patient for a craniectomy or EVD placement if necessary. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.